Hello, this is Mark Hubbs with Aeros Gone Bullet Modes. Today we're going to talk about cartridges again. And we're going to talk about why this device failed the U.S. Army and how it led to the development of those cartridges for the Colt Walker and the Colt Dragoons. I'm also going to tell you how to make those cartridges with some simple things that you can buy yourself. Stay tuned. Until 1850, the U.S. Army relied on flasks and loose bullets to load their revolvers. The troops loved the revolvers, but hated the flasks. The large elaborate powder flasks that were issued with the Colt Walker and the early Colt Dragoon revolvers could not throw a consistent powder charge. This correspondence on October 4, 1850 between Lieutenant James Benton of the San Antonio Ordnance Department to Colonel of Ordnance George Talbert describes the problem. In consequence of the frequent complaints by Dragoon officers and others of the defective nature of the flasks sent with Colt pistols, General Brooke has authorized the making of a few cartridges for these pistols for the trial, as a substitute. In consequence of the delicate nature of the machinery and the corrosive action of the powder, they are extremely liable to get out of order. They frequently fail to render the proper charge when in good order. Major Merrill of the First Dragoons says, I will make a trial of the revolver cartridges, as I find the flask will not work. Captain Steele, also of the First Dragoon, says, I am much pleased with the revolver cartridges as a substitute for the awkward flask, which never gave any two charges alike. The flask that was issued with the Colt Walker was a very elaborate affair. Beautiful brass. It had an adjustable spout that could be adjusted in increments of five grains. And it worked on a plunger system. And if I unscrew it and pull it out, you can see the plunger. Powder had to get through those holes and trapped and then cut off during the plunging system to be dispensed into the chamber of the revolver. And it's uh, spring loaded of course, but the problem is that the powder would foul it and it very often would corrode, especially in humid weather. It also had another issue or another feature and that is this hole covered by this flap which is a tube that extends down inside of the flask that would held a, held a handful of round balls. So everything is in one package, supposedly. And you also see the rings on the bottom. And I assume this, this carried a, a sling of some kind, but you can see that it was designed to be held upside down. Uh, there's no way that it could, could work otherwise. The problem is that it would not throw a consistent charge. And that was the biggest complaint that the soldiers had. To work properly, the flask had to remain relatively upright to make sure the powder got into the vents inside of the plunger on the inside. And to load the revolver, the nozzle was pressed into the chamber, pressed down, and then released. But as you can see, it's very difficult to try to keep the flask vertical. Now imagine doing this on horseback, or even worse, doing this on a moving horse. This was the cartridge that was developed as a result of those complaints. It was 44 caliber, but it was built exactly like the 54 caliber cartridge of the day that was used in the single shot pistol. You have to remember that the Dragoon and the Walkers were only issued to specialized troops such as the Dragoons. Most mounted uh, men, uh, cavalrymen and officers were still issued the single shot 54 caliber pistol. But the cartridges worked and they were still favored over the flask and the loose bullets which had been used before. However, by 1855, the design had been changed again. In October of 1855, First Lieutenant Stephen Vincent Benet wrote to the Chief of Ordnance, General Craig, on several subjects, including revolver cartridges. And in that correspondence, he described a cartridge being made at the St. Louis Arsenal. His letter even included a drawing of the cartridges being made there in St. Louis in both 36 and 44 caliber. It included a round ball wrapped in tissue paper and then the tail of that tissue paper being inserted into the cartridge envelope and tied down. The reason for this uh, new cartridge, an unusual design, is only speculation, but uh, I suspect that there were two reasons. First of all, it was easier to unwrap, get the bullet from the cartridge, and second, there were also complaints about undersized bullets, that they were jarring loose from the chambers of the revolver uh, while being in the pommel holsters. And so they were using cartridge paper uh, to help wedge the bullets into the chambers. And I believe this tissue paper was serving that purpose, at least until the bullets were standardized in size. 
Reproducing these early cartridges is a fairly simple matter, and I'm going to try to lead you through that now uh, with a few simple things. Some dowel rods, uh, some scrap lumber, lumber uh, glue, scissors, and some twine. Okay, let me show you my setup here, and you can see the, all the things I use to do cartridges. First of all, I have a piece of uh, a scrap 2x8, and I've drilled uh, holes in it at appropriate places, like half-inch holes. Uh, the first thing uh, that you may notice is this toggle, and I use this to make all my cartridges, no matter what caliber. And it's just a heavy cord on a toggle, and I use this to choke the uh, various cartridge ends before I tie them. And this is the way they did it back then, too. That's, that's not something I dreamed up. I'll be using uh, papers that I cut out based on uh, the ordnance manual. Now the ordnance manual uh, dimensions are later than this time frame, but I'm assuming it's very similar for uh, 44 caliber. And I use a thin masking paper uh, that I buy at Lowe's or Home Depot. Uh, there's just about a lifetime supply for three or four dollars in a row like this. And tissue paper for this one. This one makes it sort of unusual. And this is a, just a slightly glazed white tissue paper. It's used for wrapping packages or uh, padding inside of a, a gift and so forth. Uh, I found that in this case uh, two layers works better for this type cartridge and you'll see that as we go along. And I have a little powder here ready to use. Uh, 30 grains. Uh, pretty certain that's about what they were using in these and I'll, I'll, I'll tell you why later. And I'm using a glue stick just to make things simple. This is essentially just a uh, uh, a paste it's in a stick form and it's uh, very similar to the starchy uh, paste they used at the time to start off I'll make a cartridge envelope and I'll take the trapezoid and I'll put a little glue down the side to slant it in and uh, they probably actually did not glue these uh, they probably were uh, uh, just uh, rolled and then tied and that kept them shut. But I do this just to, to make the cartridges a little bit more uh, robust so they don't tear up as easy. Now uh, you can do it either way. And I take a dowel rod that I have shaped and I roll it toward the slanted end and make sure that it's, it's stuck all the way around. Now this rod is started life as a half inch dowel rod. I turned it down to about uh, 0.460 and you see I dr drilled a hole in the end of it and just big enough to take the tail of this paper wrap ball which you'll understand more in a moment and it's very important that you do that because if you don't the ball will sit on top of the rod uh, sort of cockeyed when you try to tie it and it won't tie off straight. You'll understand that more in a moment. So I just go ahead and make up several of these cartridge papers and I'll lay them aside and let the glue dry. And we'll tie one off and I use uh, unbleached linen thread. Uh, I think that was pretty much the norm all the way through the paper cartridge time. Uh, you can use cotton, you can use kite string, anything that you can find. I, I personally prefer uh, some kind of natural material that could have been used to, during the time frame. Now to wrap the bullet, I take my round ball and my papers, the uh, tissue papers are roughly two and a quarter, two and a half inches in diameter and uh, it doesn't have to be precise. Uh, it doesn't have to be a perfect circle either. I just basically uh, take, the, take the paper, fold it in quarters and then uh, cut a circle, a quarter circle out and unfold it uh, to get my circle. You'll notice I've drilled some holes in here. These are all half inch. I'll use this later to support the, to rod, the rod when I tie off and so forth. But I've also found it's very handy to find the center of that paper, drop the bullet in it, and crimp the, uh, the paper around the bullet inside one of these holes. And it makes a nice clean crimp around the bullet with the uh, tissue paper. And there's the bullet, totally wrapped and you'll notice a little tail on it, just like in the picture that uh, Lieutenant Benet uh, put in his report when he sent it back to uh, the Ordnance Headquarters. 
So I'll lay that aside. So I'll take uh, one of the papers, the envelopes I previously made, and I'll find uh, the thick end, as I mentioned before, and press the rod back in, making sure that, that the end of the rod with the hole is on the thick end of the paper. And from there, I will drop the bullet in and notice the bullet tail. You see the tail that's on the, on the, on the wrapped paper. And this uh, tissue paper, once you wrap it on there, it stays very well. It doesn't try to come unwrapped. And the tail will go right into that hole. And then I press it down so that the paper is about halfway up or a third of the way up onto the ball. And we're about there, as you can see. Okay. Then I take my choking cord, I'll wrap it around one time, and I'll put my finger at the end of it to keep the ball from popping out, and about uh, oh, an eighth, maybe a little bit more of an inch below the edge of the paper, I'll just give it a little tug, and I will tighten that paper, the envelope paper, the brown part, around the tail of the wrapped ball. Remove it and I'll place that into the hole that I mentioned earlier. And then take some of my linen thread, wrap it around a couple times, choke it off, and give it two half hitches. And. Uh, my clumsy big fingers sometimes have trouble with this. And if I'm not certain it's tight enough, I'll give it another twist and a couple more half hitches. I think you could even put a little paste on the base of the, uh, the bullet too, around the tail on that paper, the tissue paper if you choose, just to make sure it stays in a little better and then I'll cut off the excess. And when I withdraw the former, the rod, the bullet will be captured inside the envelope. The next step is to charge the cartridge and fold the tail. And this sort of a, it's a, actually a simple process, but it may take a few tries, tries for you to get it right. There's a very uh, important creasing that has to be done to make sure the powder doesn't come out. Uh, come out and it's, there's no adhesive use in this. So the main thing is to shake the powder down, make sure it's sort of compressed at the bottom of the cartridge near the bullet, and then flatten the rest of the cartridge envelope and bend it down 90 degrees. And then from there, you'll fold in the edges about one quarter of the way in. And also crease those. And remember this was done primarily by women, girls, and boys in the arsenals and they could make a lot of these in the course of a day. Just the, imp the simple tubes that I showed you earlier, a boy should be able to make uh, 800 of those in a 10 hour day. So there's the completed cartridge. And I'll go over it again, folded it sideways, completely flat, turned in the edges a quarter of the way in, reflattened it. You can see how it, what it looks like there after that's done. Then back on top of itself, increase that tail right there. And then if you want it to lay flat inside the packaging, then you crease it again on the side. And so that's the completed cartridge. And these would have been packaged uh, with six rounds inside a, a packaging, you know, the same paper wrapped around it, a gift, you know, like a gift style, gift wrapping style. And then inside of that would have also been another paper tube that's been tied and choked off on one end and it would have eight percussion caps inside of it and the tail would just be twisted and uh, 
that would be placed in along with six cartridges inside a bundle and that's how they were issued to the troops. The cartridge box that was uh, available at this time was the Model 1839 pistol box, much different from the one that was issued during the Civil War. It looked like a miniature musket cartridge box because it was designed to take 54 uh, caliber single shot pistol cartridges. And uh, remember, remember I mentioned the 30 grains, the Ordnance Manual 1860 uh, suggests 30 grains for revolver cartridges. And this was before the Model 1860 was in, uh, in, uh, in issued in any great numbers. It was still the Dragoon that they were making cartridges for. And 30 grains is also what the 54 caliber single shot uh, pistol used in his cartridges. So I think they were pretty much stuck on that amount. Uh, by 1860, the single shot pistol cartridges disappeared from the Ordnance Manual. So I don't think they, although they made them during the Civil War, I don't think uh, they were that, that concerned about them. But 30 grain seems to be the amount that's uh, suggested for cartridges, and I think that was really designed for the Dragoon. The cartridges that were used during the war for the Model 1860 all tend to be about 25 grains, give or less a few grains. And uh, later on, I'm going to be making uh, a video on how to do the conical cartridge that first emerged uh, around 1860. And uh, although it was designed for uh, the Dragoon originally, the same cartridge was made with less powder for the, for the Model 1860 uh, during the course of the war. Well, I hope this uh, information was useful to you, that you enjoyed it. If you did, please like the video and uh, visit us at our website, which I'll pop up here in a minute. And uh, you can see some of the bullet modes that we have for sale for conical bullets from the Civil War era. Thanks for watching.